Hello, welcome to today's video where I'm going to talk you through how to install a USB interface and get recording on your PC. This might be basic stuff for some people, but for some people this will be a real lifesaver as to how to get started recording your music. Right, so first of all you need to install the driver on your computer and if I've done my recordings right, this should be appearing on the screen somewhere around here. There should be a screen capture that's showing you me downloading the driver for the USB interface that I'm going to use today. Now, I'm going to use two different computers to show you. I'm going to use one to show you how to install the driver and then I'm going to use another to show you the actual what you do for recording. So the interface I'm using today to show you how to install the driver is a Presonus uh, Audio Box 22 VSL, uh, fairly good USB audio interface. It's got two XLR or jack um, combi inputs, uh, can supply fountain, fountain power so you can do your uh, condenser mics um, or you can use dynamic mics. Um, and it's got MIDI on the back and it's got main outs and headphones and you can control the volume for your speakers and your headphones independently. When we move over to the um, recording side of things, we'll go over to my desktop computer and that's got a Focusrite in, uh, um, audio interface on, but the same principles apply over there. That has a couple of uh, XLR jacks on the front, but it also has a couple of other inputs on the back and can do several other things, but the basic, basically the same things apply. So. Without further ado, let's get on to what you do once you've installed the driver and hopefully at this point you'll have seen a sped up little in, uh, computer thing showing you how to install the driver. Next thing to do is connect up USB or if you're using a Thunderbolt interface, Thunderbolt. Now it's important to note most audio interfaces, certainly the USB ones, are actually USB 2. And strange enough, you want to plug this into a USB 2 because if you plug this into a USB 3, you might actually suffer in your performance, even though USB 3 is faster, and that's to do with the way the bus allocates resources. So find a USB 2 socket, and these are indicated by not being blue. So there's a blue socket on the front here, that's a USB 3, and then there's a black one, that's USB 2. So what I'm going to do is plug in my interface into USB 2, and with a bit of luck, it will be detected and having installed all the various uh, background drivers and things, it will just pick it up. Now, let's see if this is doing what I hope it's doing. Um, no sign of anything yet, which is a bit worrying, but we have got a power light in the front of this now, so that's a good start. Um, what we want is the press on this universal control driver for this one. Um, so we'll see if this works and if this tells us we've got anything connected. And yes, this tells us that we have a AudioBox 22 VSL uh, um, installed. And in these kind of drivers, there's quite often a sample rate and a block size. Now, Generally, I'd advise probably going for 48 kilohertz if you've got the option, and probably somewhere between 64 and 128 um, for your block size. That will give you a good setup for recording, but won't tax your processor too much, so it shouldn't lead to too many dropouts. And once you've done that, you're good to install a um, DAW of your choice. Now the one I'm going to show and demo is going to be Cakewalk by BandLab. The reason I'm going to demo, demo this is this is a full featured DAW that is free. Um, I often use Presonus's um, Studio One, but for that you need to buy the Studio One Professional if you want to do things right because the artist is slightly crippled. Um, artist version is crippled in that it doesn't support VST. Now VST is the universal format on Windows um, for basically any effects or instruments that you're likely to buy and so it not supporting that and requiring an extra purchase on top, I don't recommend getting the artist version of Presonus Studio, uh, Presonus Studio One. Um, however, if you went with the professional version like I've got, then you've got all the toys, but it costs a lot of money. 
um, but Cakewalk by Band Lab uh, that has all the tools and is free. So that's the one I'm going to demo in a minute. I'll see you over by my desktop computer. Right, so here we are at my computer um, and I've installed and started Cakewalk by Band Lab. So this is what I recommend getting. Uh, I mentioned before, I think this is probably the best version you can get at free and a full DAW. So when you start up, it'll do the first time you boot up, it'll do a whole bunch of scanning for any VSTs or anything you've got. Um, if you know what they are, great. If you don't, it's going to come with a bunch of things that you need anyway. Now, what I would recommend is when you get this screen for Let's Get Started, that you just click out of that and you do New, because all the default projects are set at 16-bit, 44.1 um, kilohertz, which it's a bit low for recording really. That's CD quality for mastering and you want to go higher than that for recording so you master it um, higher than that and bring it down for recording. Um, so you just come up with clicking new there and you get new project file, give it a name and let's go with some example test file and it's going to ask you where you want to put it and you put it wherever you want. Um, I'd suggest putting 24-bit, uh, 48 kilohertz, and that would match the settings we did with our uh, audio interface before. Um, tempo is your choice, and meter is your choice. Go with basic to start with, um, and click OK. And we see we get one basic audio track and one basic MIDI track. Um, if you want to add any. We could have done basic or we could have done empty. If you want to add a track, you bring up the menu and then you've got your options for audio track, MIDI track, instrument. Now, instrument is a virtual instrument, so it's a bit confusing. So you might think, I want to play my guitar, um, I need to include an instrument, but actually what you want is an audio track. So I'll just insert another audio track and you click those to bring it down. Now, for guitar, it comes with TH3. Now I'm not sure this is the full version, so I probably wouldn't uh, go with that. What I do is I go and get some form of guitar VST. Well, you could get TH3, but I get some kind of guitar VS, uh, VST. Let's just check TH3 and see if it's the right one. Ah, okay, this is the um, Cape Walk edition of it. In that case, we'll use this. Um, so I grabbed it from over in our guitar thing and I dropped it into the FX panel of the um, track here. And I'll explain what we're doing uh, as we go along. So I've got my guitar preset, so let's just find um, a, a tone. Uh, and in this case, it's doing a solder. Uh, Saldano SLO uh, 100 as a crunch um, and it's mic'd up on an angle 4x12 um, and what I'll do is I'll unplug one of my microphones that I've got plugged in and I'll choose a guitar in this particular instance I've got my um, little oh, Lug guitar I think it's great fun. It's not tuned up um, in the slightest, so this could be interesting, although I believe we'll get something for doing that. What I need to do is select record, and I probably want to echo the input, otherwise I won't be able to hear anything. Um, and then I want this channel to be mono, Again, um, track three. Uh, so now on a mono track, I need to set the input level. Wow, that's um, that is pretty bad. Um, 
and I can tweak the input level here. Tuning that, and these create the top three strings. So what I've done here is I've taken my guitar cable and I've plugged it straight into my audio interface, into the jack socket. Um, I've had to max out the gain on this one, depends uh, input gain, it depends entirely on your interface where that's going to sit. And this one has all sorts of hidden features, uh, but we'll go with the basics there. Um, and... What we'll do is we'll actually record some audio so you can, uh, I can play it back to you over the top of what I'm doing and you can see what's going on. So just as an example of how easy it can be, in Capewalk your uh, record button is up here. Now you've got metronome options, so if I click metronome setting it'll ask me how many counting measures I want. So I probably want two and I just want it on recording. You click apply and then you can click close and then if you just go that you can hear the click simple little bit of audio. Um, if I'd have actually put this as a mono track, which I should have done, we'd have it on both. Uh, wouldn't have the two channels there, we just have one, but it's interleaved on that, so the guitar is hearing it as it should be. Um, and what I'll do is I'll bring that out so you can actually hear it, how it sounds, and we'll play it back. And so that's the basics for recording an electric guitar. What I'm going to show you is some acoustic guitar recording as well. So, through the magic of uh, YouTube, I'm going to cut to me with an acoustic guitar and I'm going to show you how to connect all the various things for recording live audio. Ta-da! I'm back with my other Lube, which is a little Lube Mini, and we're going to record some acoustic audio. Um, so, what I've got is a microphone, which may or may not be in shot, um, so this is a condenser microphone, it's got a pop filter in front but you don't need that for acoustic so what I'll do is just move that out of the way. Um, I'll bring my microphone closer and angle it towards where I'm expecting the sound to come from. Um, I've now plugged in a XLR input and this is a condenser microphone so it needs power. So on most audio interfaces they'll supply power um, if you ask them to, this has got a little button that says plus 48 volts, you click that in, the Pressonless one has a similar button um, and you are good to go, it supplies power to the microphone and if you see my screen, if I click my fingers you can see my recording levels what we want to do is make sure the recording level of the instrument is right so I've changed what I was looking at, the reason I was getting a stereo signal is that the input I was selecting was toggled to stereo here and actually what I wanted was just a left channel on here as this would be considered left and this would be considered right. Um, so now I've selected a left channel for the acoustic. So what I 
I really want is a little bit more gain there. So it picks it up more. And then what we'll do is we'll mute this track so we can't hear it. Um, and then we'll record again. Play back through that track, mm -hmm. track again. We'll disable the talk back. And that is a relatively quick look at how to get set up to record for basic acoustic guitars and electric guitars. And obviously with microphones and things that also gives the option of doing vocals. Um, I'll do more in these series if people are interested and do about various plugins you can use to actually improve the signal and generally get, uh, get the results you want. Um, thanks for watching. I'm a beginner guitarist. These are my views. Let me know if this is helpful in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Oh, don't forget to click subscribe and click the bell because that tells you when I do a new video. Thanks for watching.